Hey YouTube, how you guys doing tonight? Kevin here coming at you with a late night video. Um, this is the Big Bear 400 Yamaha and I got to pull this carburetor off. So we're going to see if we can get that off real quick before it gets really, really dark. I got to clean this carburetor and this is the one we got to do an oil change to. So I'm going to try to get you guys in the stand and we'll get you, uh, um, we'll get crack a lock and see if we get this thing off real quick. Alright, so... If you guys haven't had a chance to hit that subscribe button, please do so. I appreciate it. And uh, we're working on the Big Bear Four, uh, the Big Bear Four Hundred tonight. And this one right here was um, kind of neglected, not on purpose. Um, more of a, a situation of don't know. So we're going to pull off these wires right here uh, for the sensors. There's a sensor on there. If I can get that out, there's two of them. Okay. There's one, and then the ground foot. Okay, get the wiring out of the way. And then right up in here, it's kind of hard to see, but let's see if we can shrink you guys down a little bit there for a second. Let me see if I can get you guys down to see that. What I'm working on next. Okay. Um, one second. Okay, so right here, this right here is your choke cable, and it's screwed in. It's plastic. So you guys want to make sure you're being very careful with those plastics. It's either going to be a 12 or a 14 millimeter. In this case, it's a 12. Those are the two common ones, guys. Whenever you're dealing with choke systems on any Makuni, um, Hitachi carburetor, or any of those, they're typically a uh, either a 12 millimeter or a 14 millimeter wrench to remove those. And you want to make sure you remove them while it's on the bike. And remember, they're snug. They're not super tight. They're only plastic. So you guys want to make sure you remove that before you go tugging on anything. Because I, I can't tell you how I many these are broke. And then I got wise. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I am just going to take it off prior. Do it. There's the choke right there. We'll push that right off to the side. Probably under the pet cock. All right, good. Get that right out of the way. Just like that, and then I can get right to the. Can't tell what kind of screw that is. Looks like it might be an Allen head. Yeah. All right, so we got an Allen head clamp there, and we got the throttle on the other side. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. Now that's held on with a three millimeter Allen head bolt. Oh, not bolt, but clamp. I don't want it to take off. And then there's another clamp right here for the front uh, bellow. This pipe right here is what we're taking off next. And the clamp for that is up underneath right where we are sitting. So I'm going to take that one off as well. They put that on upside down, which is fine. Everybody's got their preference where they want to put the clamp. Okay. Got that part squared out and done. And what's next? We got to see what type of throttle this is. Okay, the cable goes on the other side. So we can pull, pull the front bellow off. So right now I just pulled this bellow off right here. The air intake. Okay, that's up out of our way, and now we can see, um, well, I can't really see it too well, but the carburetor is up underneath there, and we're going to pull that out in just a second. The fuel line is right here. Whoop, sorry about that, guys. Just knocked it down. Okay, get that clamp off there. You can tell nothing's really been off this machine before. This is the first time this has ever been apart. Okay, fuel line is disconnected. So the only thing left on this right here to do is undo the throttle cable and pop it out. We're gonna see if we can just slide it out real quick. Out of the intake. So I, what I do with the intake is when I, when I got the carburetor, I push it down, pull it up, left and right, and then it normally pops right out. Okay, so once you get that out, forward, and then we're gonna have to disconnect 
the um, throttle cable, which is on the other side of the bike. All right, so the throttle is right here in back of this plate. So we got to move this in, in out of the way so we can get to the throttle. See right here, the throttle cable right here? Here's your throttle cable, but it connects underneath that plate. This is why these are a nightmare to work on, because now you got to remove this plate, and hopefully you can get the cable out, which is kind of a nightmare. So we have to undo three screws, and then that plate comes off. Now let me give, give you guys the backstory on this bike. This belongs to a customer of mine who um, said that the she has gasoline going into her oil. She tried changing the oil herself and it literally overflowed the bucket and that's when she realized she had a problem. Guys, I'm not sponsored by M12, but if you guys get a chance to get one of these M12s, this is the impact driver. I use it. I love it. And voila. We are exposed. And Ghostbusters, you wouldn't want us to expose ourselves. Same thing here, guys. All right. Now, we got to figure out the throttle assembly because it looks different than the one I'm used to. And once I find that out, I will take that apart. Alright, we're going to learn this one together, guys, because I haven't seen this style. All right, normally they have a little thing you pop out, but we're going to just take a look. How this is on there. Got this little round cap thingy. Right here. So we're going to pull the line off the top you can see how it goes in it goes up it goes up over onto that slide and goes into this thing right here this is the part we're not sure what it is so if I And they don't give you no room on this thing, I'll tell you that. Get a lot by Mosquito Zoo. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not really sure how that goes in there, guys. That cable has to be able to come through here, so that's it's got to go into that adapter, but it's got to be a way to release it. And it doesn't appear to be a way here. You know what I mean? Okay, I couldn't do that with you guys in front of me. So what happened is, this, like I said, goes up over, okay? And then it goes into this brass piece here. So you basically, same way you do any other cable, you pop it off the top and then it comes down here and this whole piece, this brass piece right here pops right out. And then after you get the brass piece out, you can then take it, I don't know if you can see this or not, let me see if I get the light better. All right, let's see if we can zoom in here. Okay, hold on, getting eaten here. Eaten alive. Okay, so then what you do is you slide that little brass piece up and it comes out fits in there just like a just like a bicycle cable and then that line the cable will pop right out right out through the side here just slide it right out through boom done cable is released all right we're gonna go back on the other side because that's the side we're gonna pull it through okay so right on the top there is a vent tube this big tube right here going into the car is we got to release. We got to get that off there. Pops off like that. And I believe that should do it. Um, and pull it off. Yep. We're just going to pull it right off the side here. And then your bottom vacuum tube. And there we go. 
we got ourselves a carburetor. One of the things I like to do when I'm ever I'm taking stuff apart is get yourself some Ziploc baggies. Those come in handy. And I also use these. I get a few of these trays right here. And these come in handy for when you're working on stuff too. Especially when you're working on stuff in abundance. You know, like this, like these carburetors. I do so many of them and I can keep these with the bike, you know. So these are the external stuff. These I can't put on until after the job is done. After I redo the carb. So I want to take a look at this. This is a, um, a vacuum slide carb. CVT. Uh, CV, yeah. CV carb. It's a Makuni. It's pretty neat, huh? Now, the cool thing about these carburetors, if you wanted to, you can use a performance carburetor on these. You can use a carburetor style, like a flat slide, uh, flat slide carburetor. Um, and a lot of people don't know how to select a carburetor for their bikes. So, we see these all over the internet. This is a PWK30. This is a PWK26. What are the difference? They look almost exactly the same. And you can see right here in the center part how this one is bigger than this one. And then if you look on the back... The mount is the exact same, but the bore is different. So, whenever you're looking at these carburetors, see the 30? That's 30 millimeters right there. 26 here, okay? It's measured from the inside diameter, and they match. Inside to inside, inside to inside, okay? So, when you're matching up these carburetors, you're going to want to match up that bore to that bore when you can see the carburetor is this carburetor style is too small but you guys get the idea if you guys had a smaller carburetor this is a, this is a 400 and you have like a say a 350 would be a smaller diameter carburetor you could use a pk that stock carburetor and get a little bit more power plus this is a power jet we're not going to get into that right now i just wanted to show you guys what the difference is because a lot of people ask me what's the difference between those carburetors they look exactly the same they are. They're just one's bored out, one's not. One's bored to 30 millimeters. Okay, so the heart of the whole problem, we're going to check on this thing. We're going to check two parts on this thing real quick. Uh, I'm not going to get into all this tonight. I just want to inspect the bottom because that's where the, um, what you call it there, the problem child is. So I want to see what the bowl looks like. And when I say problem child, what I mean by that is, is simple. I got gas going into the, into the oil. And it's because the needle and seat is, uh, whatchamacallit there, not seating. And I can smell bad gas right now. This thing is really just pee and yellow. It's awful. And I can smell it. I can smell the nastiness. And one other thing we're going to do is uh, drill out the adjustment screw. Actually, this one's already out, so this one's all set right here. This is adjustment screw. I thought that was it. kind of odd it's completely loose it doesn't want to come apart I'll try doing this gently because I really don't want to break that gasket Oops, I don't want to knock those over either having a heck of an off night tonight guys I apologize And it looks like it's stuck underneath that sensor. That's where it's stuck right there underneath that sensor. I'm going to pull that sensor out real quick. It's actually not a sensor. It's actually for warming up the carburetor. It's like a heater. Uh, ugh. Heats it up a little bit. Gets it up the temperature a little bit better. That's all it does. Just kind of warms it up just a little bit. Okay. It doesn't look all that bad in there. 
Probably just a needle and seat. Out of adjustment. Oh yeah, that's all the way up. Look at that, huh? Huh. Alright, so this thing's just going to need a good old cleaning. Good old fashioned ultrasonic cleaning. And uh, we'll check that out. And then we're going to do one more. We're going to inspect the diaphragm. So we're going to take off these two screws here. Inspect that diaphragm. I'm not going to be doing any cleaning on this carburetor tonight. I just wanted to pull it apart. Take a look and see what I'm looking at. Ooh, look at that. Be gentle pulling these out too. You don't want to be like rough with them. Now what am I looking for on this diaphragm? I'm looking for holes, rips, and tears. And I'm just giving it a little snug. Not really ripping on it. And this one actually looks in really good shape. So this is good. And then in here is where the spring sits. And there's your needle right there. You can see the, the fuel the fuel mark right there where the fuel's been sitting. So we'll put that in our little catch tray right there. Undo this fuel line if we can. So I don't need it on there. Once you break it free and work it back and forth, it should come out pretty easy. I didn't get this one all the way broken free yet. You'll feel it release. Okay, I want to show you this. This is very important. So, a fuel line can deteriorate from the inside out. This fuel line, this rubber fuel line, can actually get little pieces can break off, go through your needle and seat, go through here and get stuck in your needle and seat, and cause this exact problem due to a bad fuel line. One of the symptoms of this is when you pull your fuel line off, you see this. See this crud right here? This is fuel line right here, stuck. On this on the end of it so this fuel line has to be replaced I can't even though it looks nice it looks nice and it's pretty flexible I was gonna reuse it but when you pull it off and get stuck on the barb like that that means that the fuel line is deteriorating from the inside out so that fuel line is no good it needs to be replaced that's another cool tip for you guys because a lot of people are like oh I just clean this carburetor and it's still leaking why is it leaking no, oh, did you use the old fuel line? Yeah, that's why. I also have a very good tip for you guys tonight. Um, I know a lot of you guys don't have lifts. I don't have a lift yet. Uh, working on that. But um, a lot of times we end up going on our knees on the ground. Sometimes it's in a driveway. And doing that is really bad for your knee joints, your, um, your cartilage, and all that type of stuff. And can lead to arthritis and stuff later on down the road. Use a foam pillow. Yes, this is comfy on it. This right here, you can get these at the um, in the baby section at Walmart, Target, or even online. Uh, you can even get foam pads in the garden section at Walmart and Target and all that. And these are great for kneeling down on. They take the impact away from your legs. So get yourself a foam pad that you can kneel down on. Um, don't be a hero because I tell you, it's worth the two minutes it takes to grab that pad and put it down. So, this is for the Big Bear 400. We're going to clean this carburetor for the lady. we got to fix her, uh, what do you call it, the, her uh, oil filter. I'll show you guys that in a second. I picked up a, um, what do you call it, the Quad. This is the engine from that. This is a 100. The shifter. Well, I have a first look video. i got to do... Um, you can see how that's all messed up. Just right there. Ring, ding, 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 dong. Um, let's get you guys up here for a second. I'll show you guys. So, he, his grandson ruined the sh he power shifting. And this is all loosey-goosey. Um, the shifter down here is broken. You can pull it in and out. It's just a mess. So, um, I'm going to try to revive this thing. It hasn't ran in quite a long time. Like I said, guys, I got a lot of stuff going on. Just a ton of metric ton of projects.
carburetor for was porked, but we're gonna we got that other bike. We're gonna use the engine parts from that one, and uh, kind of make. I got the parts here to do this with, so I'm gonna fix that. I gotta make a tool. Um, I'll be doing that on film. So we got a lot of stuff going on, guys. I got so many projects. We gotta finish off the blue bike this week. We gotta finish off the pedal bike this week. We gotta do a first start on that engine, um, so that 100 uh, KE100 engine, so we can start getting that torn down, get that stuff done. We just have a ton of stuff. I haven't even been, had a chance to even think about the KE102 build. We're probably gonna have to sneak a video in on that. Might do that tomorrow night. Might pull the uh, the neck bearings out of the other one and get that done. At least get the thing started anyway, because it's driving me crazy just looking at. It. I'm like, I want to work on this bike. So, anyway. Well, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for hanging out with me. And hopefully you guys learned something. So, and uh, thank you for all that you guys do. All your contributions to this uh, channel. It's a growing channel. And it's because of you guys. And you guys are the reason why I'm, I'm sharing all this information with you. You guys have been a great audience. You guys have just been amazing. So, once again, thank you very much for all your support. All your subscriptions. And all your awesome comments. And I uh, just want to say thank you again. I'll talk to you guys later. I'm out.